Remember somebody in prayer as well. So we just want to thank you so much for joining us. And uh, whether you're part of New Life or not, we're asking you just to take those couple of moments and see what God does in your life. You'll be surprised what God wants to do in yes. your life. Yes. Uh, today what we are doing is we again are uh, studying the seven churches. We are on church number five, the church of Sardis. And you keep playing some for me. I'm going to be fun. So you can thank you so much, uh, Mr. Somali. I appreciate it for it. I appreciate it. And uh, we went to the church of Ephesus. We went to the church of Smyrna. The church of Pergamos. We went to the church of Thyatira. And today we are entering into the church of Sardis. Now, what we stated was the church comes in three ways. There was an actual church. There was an actual church like today. There was an actual church of Sardis. Then there's a church era. We're going to declare and talk about that today. It's, there's a ch real church. There's a church era, which may have lasted for centuries. But then there's the personal church. At some point in time, we find ourselves operating between the church of Ephesus and the church of Laodicea or Pergamos. It may happen over a, a period of time. It may happen throughout the day. But at some point in time, yes, you find yourself operating in that specific church. Today, we want to talk about the church of Sardis. If you will open your Bible to so Revelation chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3, wherever you are, we're asking you to please stand. Uh, whether you have it by phone, whether you have it uh, on your, uh, from your, with your Bibles, we're asking you to please stand and turn to Revelation chapter 3, and I'm reading in your hearing, Revelation chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. And this is what the Bible says. And unto the angel of the church in Sardis write, These things said he that hath the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. He says, I know what you are doing. Yeah. I know your works. That thou hast the name and thou livest. He says, but you're dead. <laughs> Be watchful. Strengthen the things which remain and, and are ready to die, for I have not found thy works perfect before God. Remember therefore how thou hast received, remember therefore how thou hast received and heard, and hold fast and repent. And therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. Uh oh, it's getting serious now. Thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments, and, and, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. Somebody say amen out there. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said unto the churches. I'm going back to verse 2. Be watchful. Strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found thy works perfect before God. Today I'm simply entitled this message for this sermonic moment is stay woke. Stay woke. Let us pray, Father. We come before you even now reaching out to touch the hem of your garment, that we might be made whole. Father, we need a word from you today. We, some of us have had a hard week. We've, we've incurred losses, and dear Lord, and Father in heaven, we're asking and praying that you would encourage us today. Lord, we're hoping that our cups, dear Lord, we're asking and praying you would pour in your spirit uh, until it overflows, and Lord, we're hoping that our hands, we're pleading and we're begging for the bread of life, feed us until we want no more. And when it's all said and done, we've been careful to give you every single bit of the honor, the glory, and all the praise. Let the church say, Amen and Amen. You may be seated in the house of the Lord today. Stay woke. Stay woke. 
It was during the early years of the American settlement when the United States was still being developed and war wars were being fought over various territories. Before Texas became a state, it was still considered to be Mexican domain. It was during the early 1800s that various battles began to ensue between this new group of Americans and the Latino nation known as Mexico. One of the leaders to arise during this period was a soldier named Sam Houston, the name from which we get Houston, Texas. Houston, Texas. Interestingly enough, if you were to study the life of Mr. Houston, or shall I say General Houston, he was not considered to be the most prominent war hero. To be quite frank, in many ways, Mr. Houston was considered to be somewhat of a disappointment, yea, even a misfit. The general, the general had many hang-ups and downs in his life, and things never quite came together for him. To make matters worse, General Houston was placed in the middle of a war with the great Mexican general Santa Anna, a.k.a. the Napoleon of the West. Santa Anna's claim to fame, which many remember, was the slaughter that took place at the Alamo. Remember the Alamo! Remember the Alamo, was the cry. As commander-in-chief of this new Texas army, Sam Houston was called to do battle with Santa Anna to win this Texas territory. The Texan and the Mexican armies would meet at San Juacetino on April 21st, 1836, and this would be the deciding war. It was reported for the first time in his entire military career that General Houston called a council to war. And the decision in question was should they attack or should the American army wait to attack? I'm going somewhere with this. Mr. Houston listened to his advisors as they discussed, as they debated, and theorized the situation, but getting nowhere facts. When everyone had their say, Mr. Houston looked up, looked at his watch, and it stated 3.30. He dismissed his counsel, Elder Brown, and then issued the order to attack. And the, banner, the battle of San Juacentino began at 4 o'clock. What time did I say? 4 o'clock. Remember that now. There was very little opposition at first, but after a while, there were 1,600 Mexicans against 743 Texans. Can you, can you imagine that? 1,600 Mexicans against 743 Texans. To be honest, the battle should have been a slaughter with the Mexican armies winning hands down. But in this battle, PJ, although the Texans Texans had, were outnumbered. It was clear that the battle, in the battle, that they had the advantage. Driving the Mexican army into the march, General Houston pressed forward to win one of the shortest battles ever recorded in history. The battle was approximately 20 minutes. It started at 4 o'clock. I'm going somewhere now. What allowed General Houston to win the battle? Some might wonder. What allowed Mr. Houston? to be the victor, you might say. Obviously, it wasn't the size of the army or General Houston's great military prowess, for General Houston was a disappointment. But one key factor yeah. allowed Mr. Houston to win the Battle of San Juacentino, and that was the time, four o'clock. The decision for Mr. Houston to attack at 4 o'clock p.m. was strategic, for Mr. Houston knew that General Santa Anna did at 4 o'clock every single day. The general always took his nap at 4 o'clock. Santa Anna lost because at 4 p.m. he was caught sleeping. Mm. If Santa Anna had stayed woke, Texas might have still been Mexico right now. But because he was caught sleeping, uh, the Mexican or the Texan army, they won the winning. Today I'm telling us uh, we need to stay woke uh, if we're going to win this battle. Sadly, sadly, this is the same.
same condition of the church of Sardis that it finds itself in. Sardis had the look, the look of being active. They had the appearance of being alive, but in all actuality, they were spiritually asleep at the helm. God says that you look like you're alive, but you're really dead. Let's be clear. The church of Sardis is now dipping into one of the lowest points in church's history. Yes. Very quickly, before me, a quick review, the church of Ephesus, the church of Ephesus is the loveless church, but it has, it has fallen out of the deep, passionate love of Christ. That era is 34 AD to 100 AD. The church of Smyrna is the church under pressure, yet remaining faithful to God. This era is 100 AD to 313 AD. Pergamum is the distracted church, which represents the church era between 313 AD and 538 AD. Thyatira, the church of era of 538 to, to 1565 AD, is also known as the Dark Ages. Yeah, yeah. I'm going somewhere. Now we have Sardis. This is the church era from 1565 to 7040. I'm bringing us to a home, brothers and sisters. But Sardis also represents the church that's inside of us. Paul says it like this, having a form of godliness, yet denying the power thereof. He's not talking about the world, he's talking about the church. What happened during the era of Sardis? In regard to the era of Sardis, it was just coming out of the Dark Ages. Martin Luther set off the Protestant Reformation on October 31st, 1570, by 17, by nailing the 95 Theses to the doors of Wittenberg. This is, this is history and history that we should know. Saints, we are Protestants. Protestants. Or what is called protesters. Yeah. We were protesters yeah. against Catholicism. Follow me now. The printing press was created thereby allowing the scriptures to be printed quickly and the language of the people. Yeah. America was now coming on the scene. Education was improving. The people were reading the word of God. You had what was called Lutherism that was coming about. You had John Calvin, which was Calvinism. You had the Moravians. You had Methodists, which came out of John Wesley. And eventually, we, we took on and adapted the Seventh-day Adventist Church, adapted many of the ideologies of the Methodists. But something happened. The more people debated the Bible, the more and more sects and denominations began to spring up. Let me say that one more time because something is happening, brothers and sisters. Yes, the more, the more they began to debate the Bible, the more denominations began to spring up. Pastor, what does that have to do with me? The more and more we start debating the Bible, the more and more sex began to come up. Well, I'm present truth then. You're not present truth then. I believe in eating this way and You eat this way and you drink this way, and uh, I wear this thing, and you wear this thing. And what happens is, what happens is, brothers and sisters, eventually over time, various denominations began to spring up, and ideologies. The same thing is happening in the church of God today. If you disagree with the person, you were excommunicated. Rejected or expelled from the group. But something else began to emerge. Justification by faith was noted for its correct terminology, but it wasn't experiential. They said, I, I believe that Jesus Christ can save me, but they weren't living the example. The gospel was treated as a doctrine rather than power of God to save us unto salvation. It's one thing to believe in the gospel. It's another thing to let it change you. Well, they had the appearance of faith, but they really didn't believe. They had a manifestation of strength, but they had no power. 
They had the pretense of activity, but they weren't really productive, Sister Jamar. They had the facade of life, but they were spiritually dead, Sister Quintella. The church of Sardis had gotten low, so low, that God's commendation to them is, I know your works. You have a reputation that you're alive. You, you look like you're vibrant, but you are really dead. Then God says this, watch. The translation says, wake up. But Pastor William Paraphrase says, stay woke. Because you think you're alive, but you're really dead. When Jesus tells the church of Sardis to watch and wake up, the church should have been sensitive to this divine injunction. Sardis was known to be this rich and luxurious city. The wealth of Sardis was legendary. Unlike Thyatira, who was in a position of vulnerability, the city of Sardis stood as a major mountain on a major mountain, and its position made it almost impenetrable and impregnable. Are you following me today? It was stated that Sardis stood like a gigantic watchtower guarding the Hermes Valley. In other words, Sardis had it going on. For centuries, it looked as if no army could defeat Sardis. They tried to attack, but they couldn't get it. They tried to take it, but they couldn't do it for centuries. Until something happened. If a king were in war and had to be retreated, he knew that running to Sardis would mean his protection. But one day, King Cyrus, as in the Bible, was looking for a way to defeat Sardis and offered a reward to anyone that could find entrance into the city. Intriguingly, the rock on which Sardis was built was brittle, meaning it was packed dry mud rather than solid rock. Oh, let me go ahead and preach right here. If you want to stand today, if you want to make it in life, if you want victory, you can't have packed mud. You got to have solid rock. And this rock is Jesus. Yes, he is the one. Because of the nature of the rock, over time, it developed cracks in it. A soldier standing around observed one of the solid soldiers one day accidentally dropped his helmet over the battlements. To retrieve his helmet, the soldier climbed down using the cracks, and they climbed back up using the same cracks which formed in the mountain. This gave the enemy, Cyrus, the exact opportunity that they needed to invade the city. If they wanted to go in the city, then they would have to use the cracks. Uh, let me go ahead and preach right here. I've come to the conclusion, brothers and sisters, the only way the enemy can invade your life, uh, the only way the enemy can disrupt your peace, uh, the only way the enemy can spoil your joy, the only way the enemy can assault your family is he has to find the cracks in our lives. Uh, if you want to defeat the enemy, if you want to overcome his forces, if you're looking for victory, you've got to determine in your life, I'm living my life with no cracks. Amen out there. No more cracks in my prayer life. No more cracks in my worship. No more cracks in my giving. No more cracks in my relationships. No more cracks in my service. No more cracks. Somebody say no more cracks. No more cracks. No more cracks. No <laughs> but the story doesn't end. When Cyrus' army get to the top, they find the battlement was completely unguarded. Now not only not only did they have cracks, but now it's unguarded. The Sardis had fought themselves to, to be safe, and they didn't felt that they didn't even need a guard. And because they had no guard, Sardis fell. But to make matters worse, 200 years later, in another war, Sardis fell under the same situation with no guard at watch. No one was there to stay woke. Uh, could it be? Our communities are infested with methamphetamines and opiate addictions because there's no guard at watch. Could it be our youth and young adults are leaving the church and grows because there's no guard at watch? Could it be if the marriages are tearing apart and divorce still plagues society? Can I say this? And what happens is it plagues the Christian church. Could it be because there's no guard at watch? 
Could it be the church is making very little progress and can't move forward because there's no guard and watch? Thus the command to the church of Sardis was emphatically to maintain an attitude of watchfulness. Paul says it in Romans 13, 11. It's high time to wake from your sleep. 1 Corinthians 6, 13 says it like this. Be watchful, stand firm in your faith. Matthew 26, 41. Jesus says, watch and pray that you do not enter into temptation. Matthew 24, 42, 43 says, watch therefore, for you do not know what day your Lord is coming. 1 Thessalonians, Thessalonians 5, 6. Let us not sleep as everybody else is sleeping. That's, we need to keep awake and keep sober. In other words, wake up and stay warm. Church of Sardis should have been one of the most thriving churches. The Church of Sardis faced no heresy and no doctrinal controversy like Ephesus. Sardis faced no persecution from the outside or in the inside like Smyrna. Sardis didn't face the same distractions like Pergamos. They didn't have Balaam and Jezebel like we talked about. Sardis wasn't vulnerable, looking for significance like Thyatira. You would think that with no major disputes, this church would be vibrant and thriving. Brothers and sisters, sometimes it's pressure that causes us to go ahead and manifest the Spirit of God in our lives. The truth of the matter was that Sardis was so lifeless and comatose that no one thought them worth attacking. They had no pulse. No pulse for Christianity. No pulse for community. No pulse for spirituality. Sardis was in trouble. The church of Sardis was dead. They had the appearance of being alive, but they were actually completely obsolete. One of the biggest disappointments in the world is for a church to close, disappear, and no one even misses them. Let me ask you a question. If this church, New Life Seventh-day Adventist Church, were to disappear, would people say, where is that church? Or would they just keep driving by and keep going and not even miss us? So when Jesus looks at this church, he sees a church living a facade. He sees a church that's not keeping it real. He sees a church living under false pretenses. Jesus sees a church that he cannot connect with. The challenge is that in the process of thinking that they were really somebody, over time they began to deceive themselves. They began to live behind the mask. They were suffering from their own COVID-19. Hmm? Yes. Stories told of a man who took a job in a zoo impersonating a monkey. The zoo's last monkey had just died, and busloads of children were expected to visit the next day. What are we going to do? So they got a man and they put him in the monkey suit. A perfect costume was designed for the man. He was given a crash course on a tree, a, a tree swinging and monkey sound, but midday the next day, he was encouraged by the appreciation of the children and really got into playing the monkey. He was having a real good time, Elder. But, but while swinging, Sister Bernie, from branch to branch, he suddenly fell into the lion's den. As the people watched, they knew this man's life was about to come to the end. Uh, the, the monkey saw the lion, uh, the lion saw the monkey, and everybody said, oh no, here we go. The man began to shout for help, help. He's fearing for his life, can somebody save me? And the lion began to come up to the man. And as he came up to the man, the lion whispered in his ear, shut up, fool, <laughs> or we're both gonna lose our job.
artificial intelligence, yes, they have what's called facial recognition. Mm -hmm. With facial recognition, you can go somewhere and the camera can actually recognize who you are and pick up on your facial structure, or, or, or the facial, your facial structure. Well, one of the problems with the coronavirus is now we have to all wear masks. Yeah. And because we're wearing masks, the cameras are having problems recognizing who we are. Now, since I don't mind, I'm gonna wear my mask. I don't have a problem with Big Brother watching. Hey, I mean, I mean, I'm not, I'm not for that, brother and sisters. Amen. Physically, though, we need to keep the mask on to protect our health. But spiritually, God is telling us, remove the spiritual mask so that I can reveal to you who you really are. See, God already knows who we are. He knows our works. The problem is we don't know who we are. And what happens is God is saying, it's time to remove the mask so you can realize who you are. I believe one of the most damaging and injurious elements to a relationship is when one party or both parties don't feel comfortable keeping it real. Yeah. We, we, we need to be able to keep it real with one another, amen? If you if you somewhere and you hang out with folk, but you got to keep walking on eggshells, y'all know folk like that, amen? Oh, yeah. it's, not a, it's not a whole lot of folk in here, so you can turn to your right, turn to your left, and that's right. <laughs> but there's some folk you got to walk on eggshells. Some of us, we walk in our houses, and you're like, is, is everything okay? Huh? I, I'm not talking about a disrespectful keeping it real. You know, some folk, I, Pastor, I, I just want to go ahead and keep it real. I can't help myself. I got to go ahead and speak my mind. And I'll tell you something, God won't judge you for that. Amen. Amen. For all the folks' feelings that you heard, we just got to get used to me. And you know what, brother and sister, we use that as an excuse to be rude. Am I, am I, am I, am I saying something right now? Let me go ahead and move on before y'all go ahead and kick me out of here. I'm not talking about, I'm going to get you before you get me keeping it real. Hmm? I'm not talking about an ill marriage keeping it real. I'm talking about a no ears, no judgment, no psychoanalysis keeping it real. And I'm like, no time. I'm just kind of looking to see who, who you really are. Don't you know? I don't have time for you to psychoanalyze me. Amen. And psych see what well, Let me go ahead and sing it here now. I come to the place in my life that I need people walking with me who are going to keep it 100. No mask involved. Amen out there. If my breath stink, pass me a minute. Amen. Now, hey, hey, if I got something in my face, so point me to a mirror. You need to handle that, brother. Amen. Uh, and if you don't like me, you can tell me. Hey, Pastor, I don't want you to even have to give me a while. I just don't want to deal with you. No ends. Don't think it, be real, but no man. And Jesus, Jesus wanted to let the church know the only thing that will reinvigorate your spiritual life is if you keep it real. The only thing that will restore your dead existence is to remember, verse 3, that you would remember what you received and what you heard. You heard the gospel, and you are the receiver of my grace. Hmm? You heard the gospel, but you received my grace. The gospel, brothers and sisters, gives us power to live for God. And by grace, we are saved through faith. It's not in our own power. It's only a gift of God. Uh, Jesus wants to let us know. He wants to let us know. He says, remember, remember what you received and remember what you heard. As the beggar was alongside the road, he, he was looking at Alexander the Great as he was passing by. The man was poor and wretched. He had no claims or, or no ruler, no right even to, uh, to, lift a, uh, uh, to lift anyone to help him lift a hand. Yet the emperor threw several gold coins. Mm. Uh, one of his persons, his servants, asked Alexander the Great. He said, uh, your generosity, sir, is, is, is excellent. But sir, you could have given him copper coins. That would have met the needs of the beggar. Why would you give him gold coins? Alexander replied in royal fashion, copper, co copper coins would suit the knees of the beggar, but gold coins suit Alexander's giving. Oh, let me go ahead and say it right here, brothers and sisters. Some of us, we may be begging for copper coins. Some of us, all we feel we need is copper coins. But according to God's giving, he says, I give you my gold coins of grace, of love, of joy, of peace, of a sound mind. And brothers and sisters, because of him, we get gold coins. It's because of his 
go towards we move from just activity to productivity. You know, let me let me let me go ahead and, and say this, brother, sister. Some of us are active, but we're not productive. We're just doing busy work. Hmm? Some of us move from comatose to enthusiasm. Uh, God's goal moves us from minutia to ministry. God's goal moves us from death into life. Jesus needs just a few people with their sardis condition to be in a position of overcomer. Mm. Jesus says it like this, Thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, which are not defiled by garments. In other words, you, there's a remnant, amen. Mm -hmm. That's a remnant. There, there's a remnant of people who are going to serve me. Yes, amen. Although God longs to move within the masses, God is known to operate in the realm of the few. Y'all didn't give me on that one. Although God wants to move in the realm of the masses, God knows how to operate in the realm of the few. God doesn't need masses for something to happen. God just needs a few to move into action. Uh, the Bible says that one day, John, one day Jonathan, his armor bearer, were looking at the Philistines, and as they were looking at the Philistines, it looked like it was overwhelming. There was no way that they could defeat the Philistines. It was only the two of them. Jonathan looked at the armor bearer. The armor bearer looked at him, and it said that the situation turns in a certain way. We're going to go up. If not, we're going to stay down here. But God's going to give us the victory. And this is what he said. God doesn't need a whole lot of you people. He can win with a few people. Oh, the Bible talks about a man named Gideon. Gideon had about 22,000 men. He was out there and God said, you got too many people. Can you imagine? Uh, so Gideon, he gets rid of a, a couple of thousand people. And then God says to Gideon, Gideon, you still got too, too many people. And Gideon goes to war with three Hundred men. It only took twelve apostles, brothers and sisters, to change the world. We serve a God who operates in the realm of the few. I just need a few good men who are willing to call on the name of the Lord. A few good folk who are ready to say, I'm willing to operate the way God wants me to operate. I'm willing to walk the way God wants me to walk. I'm ready to pray the way Pray. I'm ready to serve the way God wants me to serve. All he needs is a few good men that are ready to stay woke out there. Uh, play something for play something for me. Just play something just calm. I'm gonna go ahead and close out with a story. In 1908, Irish explorer Ernest Shackleton headed to the end. Antarctic expedition attempting to reach the South Pole, Elvin. But Brother Williams, they came closer than any, any other, 97 miles short of the pole, and they had to turn back. In his day, Shackleton told of a time when his food supplies were exhausted, save for one last ration of a biscuit that every person had. Some of the men took snow, melted it, and they made tea while consuming their biscuits. Others, however, stole their hard, a hard tack or biscuit in their food sacks, saving it for a last moment of hungry desperation. The fire was built up, and weary, exhausted men climbed into their sleeping bags to face a restless sleep of tossing and turning. Shackleton said that he was almost asleep when, out of the corner of the eye, he noticed one of his most trusted men sitting up in his bag and looking about to see if anybody was watching. These men didn't have much. These men were hungry, and Shackleton looked to see what was about to happen. His heart sank within him as he looked at the man and the man began to reach toward the food sack of the man next to him. Shackleton watched as the man opened the other man's food sack and, and then something strange happened. This man reached into his own food sack with his last remaining biscuit, took it out and put it into his friend's backpack. Shackleton looked at the situation.
situation. And he says, man, that gave his heart relief. He says, while we were all sleeping, one man decided he was going to serve the Lord. One man decided he was going to go ahead and give the last. One man decided he was going to do the right thing. Today, I'm saying to us all, stay woke. Do the right thing. Stay woke. This is a time, brothers and sisters, if we are not careful, we'll fall right back into sleep. You know, after 9-11, after 9-11, woo, churches were packed. This is it. It's coming down to the end. This is, this is it. God is coming in. And then 9-11 came, and then 9-12 came in. 9-13 came, and then 10-21 came, and eventually 2002 came, and 2010 came, and oh, 2008 came, and 2008 came, and there was a big housing crisis, and oh, that's it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. This is it? Yeah. The economy's about to go down, it's about, and what happens is, we were excited, and what's going to happen? And then eventually that came and left. <laughs> well, 2010 came. 2011 came. Yep, yep, yep. 2015 came. Now in 2020. 2020. 2020. We got a pandemic yes. that has struck the world. This is not just America. The whole world is in a pandemic. Yes. Safe is so bad. We can't even come to church and go, well, what, what happens is you would think that the churches could be full now. And what happens is we got a, Lord, and, and we're in trouble now. And we got a pandemic. We can't even come to church. You know what I believe, brothers and sisters? I believe God has to help us recognize it's not about the church. It's about what's going on right here. And you can still connect with me wherever you are. Stay woke. Are we going to fall asleep till the next thing happens? Or the next thing happens? Or the next? God has called us to remain awake, brothers and sisters. He says, I have a few. He says, I have a few. This is not a total loss. It's not a total wasting. I still have a few. I still got no one his family. I, I, I still got... going to be you? Is it going to be me? Today, God is calling us. Stay woke. Stay woke. Maybe you are in the smartest condition right now. You feel spiritually dead. You're going through life and you don't feel connected. Maybe you're going through life and you say, Lord, I've been wearing the mask for a long time. And Lord, I'm ready to take this mask off. No, not, not your physical mask. You still need that. Amen. But you're ready to take that spiritual mask off. Well. And again, God already knows who you are. Yes. He wants you to take your mask off so you can see who you are. So we ask you. We ask you today. What are you going to do? Are you going to stay woke? Are you going to wake up? Are you going to move from death into life in your life? Today I'm going to give you the opportunity right now. There's somebody out here today who wants to accept Jesus Christ into your life as your personal Lord and Savior. You've been listening to the messages for the last couple of weeks. You've been listening and maybe you're not just listening to us, maybe you're listening to other preachers. And God has been convicting your heart. And I want you to understand, even though you're not able to grace the doors of, uh, of this church or any churches as of right now, maybe, God still wants to grace the doors of your heart. He said, won't you let me come in? Won't you let me come in? Won't you let me give you life? Won't you let me reinvigorate you? Won't you let me restart your spiritual walk? He's doing it right now for you. Today, if that's your wish, you want to serve Jesus Christ, you want to have him as your personal Savior. Today, we want to pray for you. 
We want to go ahead and we want to ask that God will come into your life and jumpstart your spiritual walk. Maybe you've been walking this walk for a long time. And you say this, Lord, I've been slipping into this state of, of sleep and com I'm comatose now. And, and you want to have that fresh relationship with Jesus Christ. If that's your wish, we're going to pray for you as well. Let's pray. Lord, I'm asking you to pray right now that you would awaken us from our sleep and our slumber. Lord, we're asking us, dear Lord, that we're asking today, dear Lord, that you would just be with us, dear Lord, and follow like a lawnmower. We're asking and praying you would pull the plug, dear Lord, and that you would just jumpstart us, dear Lord. Help us to become active and productive in you. Lord, there's somebody that needs to accept Jesus Christ into their life, into their heart right now. So, Lord, right now, I'm asking and praying that they would accept you, that they would pray this prayer. Lord, I am a sinner saved only by your grace. I know that through justification by faith that I can accept you right now. I know through sanctification you call me to a daily walk with you. And through glorification, I look forward to that day where my life will be truly changed and I will see your face in peace. If that's your wish, pray that prayer. And then, dear Lord, there's somebody here today, dear Lord, you've been walking the walk for a long time. But dear Lord, it's time, dear Lord, to, for you to, uh, for, for us, dear Lord, to uh, re jumpstart our prayer life, to jumpstart our, our worship, jumpstart our reading of the word, dear Lord. We're asking that you would do that right now. Lord, jumpstart us as well. We thank you, Father. We bless your holy name for all you're doing and all you're going to do. It's my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Whatever you're going through in your life, whatever you're facing today, we're asking you to stay woke, wake up, and allow God to keep you sound and awake in Him. Thank you. God bless you. And I believe God has a blessing in store for all of us. Amen. Amen. Let the church, Facebook Live, say amen. 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 I want to thank the Lord for doing what he does best every week. That's showing up and showing out in his word. Amen. amen. It really, really touched my heart. Uh, I just want to give us a couple uh, reminders, and then we're going to close out uh, uh, do our benediction. Uh, I want you to remind you all that our sermons are also on YouTube channel. Please search for the New Life Church channel. And subscribe. And you can see our sermons on YouTube. Say amen, huh? Amen. God is blessing that his word will get out there. Amen? amen. And we're so thankful for that. I also want to remind us that our fast for this month is we're going to pray from 7 to 7.30. Now, as I was sitting over there listening, uh, getting a lot of text, you know, people. Uh, that means that they're interested in it and, and, and participating. Yes. Amen. Someone said, I work second shift, so what I'm going to do? I said to them, I said, well, what we need to do is pray to the Lord that at 7 o'clock or, 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 or something like that, you just get in the attitude of prayer. Okay. And that, that, that works all right, huh? Uh, just do your job, but let your mind stay on Jesus Christ. Amen? amen. Say amen, huh? Amen. And if you want to, when you get out of work, take another 30 minutes to do something. Yes. Is that all right? For those who work second shift. Then I got another text. Somebody that works third shift. Yes. I said, well, you just wake up. <laughs> you ain't got to be in there until 11 o'clock. So just wake up. Set your, set, your, set your clock to wake you up at 7 o'clock. Pray and then go back to sleep. Amen? Amen. God will refresh you. Amen? Amen. But I know you just want to participate. You want to be home. And you can do those things. And God will bless you. Amen? Amen. Then I got one more text. One more text. We had prayer meeting. Well, praise God, we had prayer meeting from 6 30 to 7 30. Amen. Amen. You can take part in the prayer during prayer meeting. Amen. Amen. Oh, y'all all say amen. amen. God can fix that thing for you. Amen. amen. Uh, so, Wednesday, you ain't got to miss it. Just tune in to prayer meeting. Amen. amen. And from 6 
6.30 to 7.30, you'll be able to pray. We just want to say thank you, Jesus, for the power of prayer. Amen? Yes. Thank you, Lord, for the power of prayer. Let me ask you this as we close. Haven't God answered your prayer? Yes. Through fasting and praying, haven't God showed up and showed out? God wants to work things out in our lives. But we just got to do it for Jesus. Amen? Amen? Let's don't forget. Let's don't forget to give. Uh-oh. Huh? Give to God yes. what God has given you. Let's don't forget to send your tithes and offering in. Let's don't forget if God touched your heart to just send an offering in to our P.O. Box 80006. And God will see us through. Amen? Now let us pray in the final benediction. In the final benediction. May the grace of God go before you to protect you. May the grace of God give you the power to take off your back yeah. so that Jesus can see who we really are and reveal to us who we really are. May the grace of God wrap your loving arms around you and give you a hug this week when you need it. May the grace of God be beneath you to keep you from falling. Here and now and forever. Let the church of the living God say amen, amen. and amen. 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 Your Lord and God. If God has blessed you, baby. if God has set you free, praise the Lord in your